In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the, just the weather part. This is the part you download from my web page and you plug in and you make a couple of changes and then you can get the weather. Okay? So uh, it's the starter code, so to speak, for, for Lab 4. It's where you begin doing your Lab 4. All right, probably good to, to look at openweathermat.org from a regular user standpoint um, uh, and type in the name of your city uh, to make sure that you see Austin Space Texas was going to be searchable, right? So if you want to know the, uh, mm -hmm. you know the weather in London, you can see if London works or New York City or whatever you want to look. And you can see uh, that that's an appropriate, I'll leave that open. All right. Um, be careful downloading it. You probably already have on your computers an application, uh, which, uh, which is a project which is called CC3100 Get Weather. Uh, that may be fine. Just look in the main program and make sure it's got a July date. Okay. So uh, this particular, uh, this first demo here, I finished back over the summer. But make sure you have a, a recent enough. Uh, recent enough project. Uh, there's a lot of uh, documentation out there. This is the CC3100. There's a whole folder full of documentation. The lab manual itself will give you a reading guide about what it is I expect you to have read. Uh, there's what it looked like over the summer. Uh, I used the Nokia and this one as you can see um, I used my ST7735 uh, in, in this month. Uh, but the booster pack goes on top of the launch pad. The only trick is to get the silk screen in the same direction. All right, so if you, if you look at the launch pad and you see the letters, and you look at the letters on your booster pack, line them up so that up is up, okay? Because it will go on upside down, and it will go off to the left or up a line or down a line. You engage it in the, all 40 pins but so that the silk screens are both going in the same direction. <clears throat> Here's what the, uh, in case my demo doesn't work, uh, this is the response uh, back from the server. Okay, uh, And in there, obviously this was done a long time ago, back in February, uh, when it was cold out. Um, but let's go ahead and show you the, the real code. Okay. The first thing you're going to have to change is the pass key in the SSID. And unless you're going to do your lab four during lecture, when I got my cell phone here, uh, or over my office when I'm carrying my cell phone, you're going to have to change the name of the access point. That's the name of my cell phone. Uh, I will, at the end, get adventurous, but not being an adventurous type. I'm going to leave it because I know it worked. Okay, just tried it. Uh, but you're going to change the SSID. Uh, now, mine has a WPA, which also includes WA, WPA2. And uh, but if it's uh, so, there there are a bunch of choices associated with the with the encryption. If you do a um, if you do a right click on there and show where it is, you'll see all the, the other choices for encryption, and that's the pass key uh, to get into the access point. All right, so you're going to have to hard code. Uh, the SSID and pass key. Mm -hmm. So those are two things you're going to have to change to make it work. Nevertheless, uh, they're not that complicated. Okay, let's go to the main program. All right, so let's, uh, do you remember the steps? Uh, do you remember the steps for getting on the internet? Okay. Turns out the first step is to connect to the access point. And so uh, let's go ahead and download it. Okay, we better build it. Let's build it. Okay, come on. Build it. Uh, it's a fairly large program. As I mentioned last time, it's, uh, it's written at a Tivaware. And you can see it's got a lot of modules. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I downloaded the example from the internet and modified it. But I haven't pruned it. So I'm not sure how many of these modules it actually needs. Um, but download. Because obviously on my computer was the um, was the lab four, and now this is the starter code with just those two changes: the the name of the access point, the type of security, and the 
All right, let's, um, uh, the first step that it has to do is get on the, uh, get on the access point. And what it does, step over, I meant to step over and not step out, is it, you, it does use the, the UART to give you some debugging information. So if you opened up PuTTY and it would display stuff out the serial port for you to look at. So if it doesn't work, go ahead and open up PuTTY and see what, what junk is coming out of, out of PuTTY because it'll probably tell you what, 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 what went wrong. Um, The first thing it does here is it will um, it will put the CC3100 back to its default, okay? And then this guy is the is the initialization, the start. Uh, this is the this is the init. This is the ritual. This is the setup. You remember the word SL means simple link, and so this is the simple link command for turning it on. Okay. Uh, we are going to step over this time. Okay, step over, step over. Okay. So the uh, the wide area uh, network connection, uh, again it uses the name, the and the um, the the password and the security type, it passed that in. It takes a little while to get connected, so you know it may go through this loop a couple of times. All right. Uh, let me try the other access point. Uh, the, this is a virtual router manager up on the internet where, the, where all the other videos are. is a four minute video showing me installing this. Uh, and once you install Virtual Router Manager, uh, your computer has to be on the internet, and then it will spawn an access point. You can give it its name, uh, you can give it its password, uh, we're going to make it Wi-Fi, and we're going to start. Okay, oh, I see it's connected over here. Uh, yeah, maybe, well, maybe there were two. All right, let's go back. All right, so... Um, if if your device is connected, you will see its you will see its MAC address right there. All right, let's go make this guy again on at about at about line one hundred uh, is the spot where you put in the name of the access point and the password. Build, oh not build, I don't compile, download. Try this again. Load. Yeah, this is a. Uh... All right, step over. Let's see if I can get down to the. All right, I got a break point there. Let's see if I get there. Not okay. I am thwarted. Oh, there we go. Not patient enough. <laughs> Some who says the internet's fast. Uh, I am now hooked up to the virtual router that's running off my laptop, and that is the typical way that we expect you to run Lab Four. All right, I'm back in business. I'm back in business. All right. Uh, so the first step was to connect up to the router. Okay. So uh, that took the SSID, the the type of encryption, and the password. Um, step over. Step over. All right. Uh, the second step is I'm going to take the letters openweathermap.org. I'm going to take these letters and I'm going to go, hey internet, where are you? Okay, or hey, openweathermap.org, uh, where are you? And I'm going to use something called a domain name system. Okay, and I'm going to pass in the host name by letters, and I'm going to get back its IP address. Okay, step over. 
Flip over. All right. So it worked. I'm good. I'm happy. Okay. We can actually look at the address. I can get down here. And there's the, there's the address uh, down in this uh, IP address. Uh, it's Big Indian or Little Indian? This is on, this is a variable on the this is a variable on the uh, on the uh, on the arm. This is probably in Little Indian, okay? Uh, and so there will be a desire to switch it from uh, uh, Big Indian into Little Indian, so that I can use it as a parameter. Okay? So that's a 32-bit address telling me where the uh, in Little Indian form. Of where the well, openweathermap.org is. Okay. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is open a socket. Well, in this world, uh, you have to create the socket, which is a variable. Okay. I'm going to create a socket, and I'm going to create a socket with a certain type. That means TCP. Okay. That type means TCP. Okay. So I'm going to create a socket, which is a data structure. It's got a socket ID. This is, allows you to have multiple sockets open, but as you saw, we're going to create a socket. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to connect to it, and then we're going to close it. Okay? And there's the connection right down here, right there. This is going to connect up this socket to the physical IP address. All right, the 32-bit the address we just did the domain name service on, we're going to connect, and then we're going to get a response. You remember that? The, the server is going to respond back with the equivalent uh, server socket uh, that we can communicate with. And so this connection socket is going to wait for a response. Okay, And then... Uh, if the if the response is good, if the return value is is a, is a is a true or greater than or equal to zero, I guess non-zero, uh, non-negative, uh, this socket has been connected. So I now have a socket on the OpenWeatherMap.org that I can communicate with. All right. Uh, so I got to send the request, and we saw the request. Well, we didn't see it yet. And for the for the weather server, uh, we're going to have a format that looks like this. So it's going to begin with that. Okay, there's it says, get me the weather. Okay, and then there's a bunch of fields. Okay, I'm going to say what I want is the weather in Austin, Texas. Okay, that's where I want. Remember, we looked up Austin space Texas was searchable. Uh, I don't want it in imperial, imperial units. I want it in metric. So I can say, uh, give me the units in metric. Um, and then the rest of this was like the other one. We're going to send, um, we're going to put this up here. You can see it here. There's more parts of this field. It's a big long thing. Uh, it tells us within the server where should we be asking. There's an API that we want to connect up to in the server socket. And then we want to get everything back. It says, give me all you know about Austin, Texas. Okay. Uh, this particular server requires two carriage returns at the end in order to get things rolling. So it has some carriage returns between the fields, and a double carriage return says end of message. And that's how this socket works. All right, step over. All right, so here I'm going to send the message. Okay, again, that's a TCP payload. Okay, uh, that doesn't work. If that didn't work, you, you're not back, you're stuck, and the reset button will be your friend. Okay. And then uh, what's happened is the, the weather, uh, the server said, yep, you got some stuff. Let's, let's hear, here it is. And so I'll receive the TCP back. Okay. Um, now, rather than opening the receive buffer here in this window, uh, that's an ugly window that takes a lot of time to load. I'll look at the receive buffer in the memory window, and I want the receive buffer. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Uh, debugging is fun. Let's go with that. 
Uh, what have I learned? I learned that, uh, that it runs slow. You know, it, sometimes it takes time to, to get across the world, wherever this thing is, and back. Um, that's, why, that's why I want you to always, uh, don't throw away this starter code. I want you to make two, I want you to make two edits to the starter code. I want you to make, put in your SSID and put in your password. And then make a copy of it. So that you can always go, is my server broken? Is, is, is the, sometimes, last night I was having trouble, but it turned out openweathermap.org was down. Right? <laughs> uh, and so I thought I was broken. So uh, I encourage you to, to keep this one open. Um, keep this, this project uh, open because it's, uh, uh, if this, this project runs, Okay, it may take a reset or a power up, uh, but there's no bugs in this program. Okay? It could be a it could be something flaky in the hardware, or you're not waiting long enough. Uh, but I want you to, to come back to this as you're as you're debugging. Uh, and like I said, it does create quite a bit of output uh, to the serial port, which is also uh, which is also helpful. So in in summary. Uh, what we had is in order to, to live in the client uh, server uh, paradigm, uh, you are the client and you connected the access point. Uh, you use the domain name service to convert openweathermap.org into, into a 32 bit IP address. You create an open net socket that creates a connection socket, a server socket in the uh, it creates a server socket in the in the server, and you are going to then send a GET request for what the weather is. Uh, it will respond. You're going to parse it. Okay, you'll parse it so that your display uh, shows the t the weather, the, the temperature on the screen, um, and then you close. And it turns out the lab, okay, the the second part of the lab is just duplicating this code. Okay, what's different? Well. It's not the weather, it's the 445L server address. And you convert it to an IP. And the get response looks a lot like the other get, but the fields are a little different. Okay? So again, you're just going to have both a, uh, you'll have a while loop that both uh, communicates with the weather and then communicates sending uh, some sort of measurement up to the 445L server. And then uh, I close the socket and wait for the, the operator to push the button. All right, questions? Uh, this is uh, um, this is a fun lab.